Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. I am continuing with the new series that I have started at the request of the Lord Jesus Christ. This series is about the fallen ones, so it will cover quite a bit of information because fortunately or unfortunately, I have a great amount of information on these things that I have been receiving from the Lord over varied periods of time. So this channel is an end times prophecy channel. That is the primary goal. That is the primary call of the work and mission that the Lord God has given me. And therefore on the master's voice, we are going to at times, actually often, cover things that are not dealt with in mainstream Christianity. So what, what am I talking about when I say mainstream Christianity? This is the Christianity that you can find if you pop into any church, whether it's a large church, medium-sized church, this is the Christianity that you can find if you just decide to drop in on a church, they're going to be talking about how much Jesus loves you, which is true, but it is not without conditions and caveats. The Lord's love is not reckless, as I have been saying for over three years now. The, love's, the Lord's love is actually very focused, and it does require things from us, but usually those things are not taught in church. Um, they'll be talking about influence. They'll be talking about how to widen your expanse and your center of influence as a Christian. They might be talking about quite a few topics, some of them biblical, most of them having nothing to do with the book that is before me right now. And so the Lord God in his wisdom has decided to bring forth the truth concerning what he expects from us as his people. And so I have been receiving prophetic information from the Lord directly related to the end times since the year 2012 until now, 2021. I was just reflecting on what a long period of time it has been. And what's more interesting is before the Lord actually spoke to me in 2019 and told me, Celestial, it is time to make these things public. I am thinking that many people do not have the necessary awareness of the times that we are in simply because to some level, it is not because the information has not been there. The information definitely has been there, but people are not minded to listen to it simply because it doesn't line up with mainstream Christianity. So it doesn't look and sound like what you've been listening to on the podcasts, on the YouTube videos that have 12 million views, you know, how much God loves you or rise up and release your inner David and things like that. But I'm here to tell you that as an end times messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am bringing forth the true prophetic words, the true prophetic judgments, and the revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ that will directly affect your life, your family's life, my life, my family's life. And so it is really in your best interest when you come to this channel to... Um, what can I say? If I make this movement, I'm trying to say, bend yourself into a shape that is able to absorb the things that I'm saying. Bend yourself into a shape that is able to truly listen and receive and absorb what God is saying so that this information actually can benefit you. And so this is a dream from June the 4th, 2016. As an aside, the Lord has been showing me these creatures that call themselves aliens since I was a young child. And um, I've mentioned about the fact that when I was about nine or 10 years old, can't exactly pinpoint the year, I had a recurrent dream over and over again. And this dream was so clear and so vivid that I woke up in absolute terror every time I had it. And even if I, as a child, tried to keep myself awake and not go back to sleep, whenever I went back to sleep, the dream clicked from that exact position and began to play. It was always the same dream. It was always the same scene, scenes of absolute destruction as fleets of what are called UFOs um, came filling the night sky and completely obliterated everything that was on the ground. This is buildings, this is people, this is animals, this is everything. They shot these long green rays out and everything that the rays touched either was sliced into pieces. So they were, the rays were slicing people and people were dropping dead. But when the rays would hit maybe larger objects such as cars or buildings, those things would simply combust. And so I was seeing these scenes of absolute power and I was paralyzed by these dreams with fear. And I shared these dreams finally after about six or seven months of keeping this to myself as a small child um, with my parent. And she said to me, it's not real. Don't worry. Nothing like that will, will harm you. And I remember that I remember seeing now as an adult, how much God honors 
uh, true parenthood. You know, my mother comforted me and she told me that nothing was going to hurt me. And the Lord who watches everything, every exchange that you have with your child, every exchange that you have with your family member, always know that God is watching. He's watching them and he's watching you. And he's keeping two separate accounts of how both of you behave. And the Lord honored my mother's word. And I didn't have those dreams again. When she comforted me, the Lord took the dream away, not because the dream was not real or not because the Lord was not activating um, the inbred gift of prophecy that I was born with, but because a mother comforted her child, the Lord honored that and he held back that dream and many others until I came further into maturity in my life. And so... The Lord chose a certain time very, very much further in the future when I was an adult and began to speak to me about aliens. And this was a staggering shock in my life. I shared in another video that um, we were having a conversation with my father at one point, and he was telling us um, that whatever you see on TV in America is absolutely true. It's real and that they've had it for 40 to 50 years. If you see it on TV, it means that they already have it. And at a certain time, they're going to reveal it. And I remembered um, certain dreams that I had had, definitely this alien one. And I was a strong advocate that it's not true, that it is not real, that these things are just for entertainment. Part of it was because my motivation was, um, I don't really share the things that I see when I'm sleeping dad. So I really hope that what you're saying isn't true. But here is the dream that I had on the 4th of June, 2016. And I was in New York city and I was going about my day, ordinary day. And I was passing by the part in times square where they, they really lay it on thick with the billboards. And so there was this billboard up for a new alien movie that I saw. And this was one of these mega movie posters that take up half the building and you have to look. And when I saw this poster, I was very irritated because of what was on it, because it showed a pyramid shaped alien craft that was hovering above earth's atmosphere. And it was hovering directly in the, the first layer of sky next to us where all our weather happens. So our weather happens in the first layer of sky where you look up, you see clouds, you see many other things. That's where the rain come from, comes from. That's where all the hurricanes brew and everything like that. And so these craft were hovering directly in the place where weather phenomena takes place. And I saw it and I felt a quick stab of irritation because even in real life, I, I just hate seeing these things. And I, I moved on with my day and then I got home and there was a heavy mist that came over the entire city in New York City and this mist would not dissipate. So usually we know that mist is the poor sister of fog. Fog is that really serious weather phenomenon that is suspended rain droplets and depending on the heaviness of the rain droplets in this mist or vapor fashion, fog can be light or heavy, but mist is just usually something that will burn off as soon as the sun rises by about nine or 10, mist is usually gone. And so you usually see mist early in the morning, but this particular mist would not go away. It got thicker and thicker and worse until the sky was like a gray soup above us. It was a thick, heavy, damp sky and a very thunderous gray look. And I thought this is so odd because this is not a fog. It definitely is a mist, but it will not dissipate. But I got home and I soon got busy making dinner. All of a sudden, for some reason, I don't know, I'm drawn to it or feeling it, I put down the knife where I was cutting vegetables and I went to my kitchen window. And you, you know, um, this is not a house that I've ever lived in. So this was just a dream house that God will put you. I leaned out because my kitchen window had safety bars. So I couldn't really uh, lift up the window and put my head out and look up. So I leaned as far as I could and I glanced upward. And what I saw is huge pyramid shaped craft looming out of this mist that now had turned to serious fog. And the reason I knew that I was supposed to make this um, prophecy today is because when I woke up, I found a conversation going on in my soul already. And the conversation went something like, it is very interesting how the word loom works, Lord. To loom means that something has been lurking but has not manifested itself. And then suddenly it begins to lean forward until it is manifested and you can see it. So if something is hidden by 
fog or mist. It can be so far back in the fog or the mist that all you will see is the fog or mist and you won't see it. But in the horror movies, you've noticed that if there is a creature out there in the forest, the fog and the mist comes first. And then you begin to see a shape until finally the shape comes out of the mist and you see what this thing is. And so when I woke up, this conversation was already going on full blown in my soul, talking about fog and mist. And immediately my mind tweaked to this prophetic word. And I thought, okay, so this is the one I'm supposed to make today. And so I saw these huge craft. These were not small craft, please understand. So this is not like your little triangle. This is a huge, massive craft with a base that is so wide. You know, a pyramid doesn't have a triangular base. It actually has a square base and then it's got four sides until it forms um, a pyramid shape and they had this kind of brick pattern that looked exactly like the pyramids in Giza you could actually see the brick etching on their surface and in between the lines was something very expensive looking that looked like the color black and silver mixed together so in between each brick where you might have used cement on a real built structure on this was this kind of reflective, expensive looking silvery black onyx like material in between. And then you can see the brick format um, around each one. And some of them looked matte, but some of them had this really shiny onyx like surface. And when I saw them looming, they had come so close to earth that they were just maybe one or two feet maximum above the street lamps. So if you know how tall a street lamp is, it's pretty tall, but they're not as tall as buildings. They're just for our use to show us where we're going. So they're about maybe a story tall or maybe a story and a half, maybe one story or story and a half max. But these ships had come down until they were hovering just above the street lights. And if you're understanding what I'm saying, that is pretty close. And I was consumed with panic when I saw this. I dropped, um, the, you know, when you're holding vegetables and a knife and you're leaning out, I dropped everything and I ran out into the street. And I was certain that the street would be full of people that had seen this craft and would be out there staring with me. But the street was empty. And the Lord opened my eyes and I saw around the world. So from where I was standing outside in my street with nobody there, not even a little dog walking home, I saw globally that these pyramid shaped craft loomed above every major city in the world. And they were hiding themselves in thick, dark thunderclouds. So you will understand if you go back to what I was just saying about how you can have fog or mist or something that can cloak or mask a thing until that thing wants to be seen and then it moves past the cloaking and then you can see it. They were using very heavy and dark thunderclouds and they were absolutely silent. For some reason, when I see these craft, they make no sound and they were sitting above every major world center and no sound came from them as they sat there waiting. And people were absolutely oblivious to the fact that these ships were sitting over their cities, over their towns. But I knew that in a few short moments, everybody would see the same sight and pandemonium would get loose around the world. And then the Lord flipped the dream and I found myself in Africa. I know people there and I found myself at the house of a friend and this person was about to sit down to dinner with his family. So I found myself pelting up the front up the front drive to the house. And I was knocking on this man's door with all the power and strength that I could muster. And he opened the door and he was so shocked to see me and saying, what, what are you doing here? So happy to see me. But I just started pouring out the story as fast as my words would give me allowance to speak. You have to know this is what I saw. There's ships and everything. And you know, when people's face starts to be like, mm, are you well? Is everything okay with you? So this, this face went from happy to concerned, like, what are you trying to say to me? And in frustration, I raced into this person's house and I went to a place where there was a large window. There's a large window. And I went to this window and I 
pulled it, I pulled the curtains aside and pointed. And there in this African nation, the ships were hanging directly within view. So you could see them all over the city center, stretching even to the horizon. And there the ships were the proof of what I was saying. But here is a curious thing that I experienced in this dream. And I wrote, what I experienced is what I now know that I'm awake. Now that I'm awake, this is what is going to happen with many people. This man and his entire family gathered at these double glass windows and they saw the ships outside. And yet their faces, especially the face of the guy, revealed polite disbelief. Have you ever been trying to explain something to someone and they look at you and their entire face is telling you for the sake of friendship, I'm listening, but I don't believe a word you're saying. I just won't tell you that you're a liar. I'll let my face do it for me. I saw that this person was struggling mentally because they did not think that they could believe me. They didn't know whether to believe me or not because what I was saying almost could not be believed because it was the stuff of science fiction and movies. And we all know, we've all been trained to know that if it's on TV, it's not true, but you can just go back to what I said about the conversation with my dad many years ago. And even though we're told that movies are just make-believe and we should relax because we're actually escaping with our mind to a make-believe story, Movies are not really there to relax you. They're there to reveal the truth of what will come in the future so that you cannot claim you did not know because the movies are an endorsed form of full disclosure by the kingdom of darkness by many governments around the world, especially this one that churns out all the stuff that people think is fun and games until of course the fun and games, as I've always said, comes down from the sky comes out of the sea, they come down from the mountains, they will come up from under the ground, and then we will realize that the fun and games were always revealing themselves to us, and we are the ones who did not know what we were watching. This man and his family saw what happened for themselves. They saw these ships in that nation, and yet they were looking at me like I was the crazy person. And I was pleading with them not to be deceived when the occupants of these ships came out and began to proclaim that they were helpers and they had come to do good and they had come to be a blessing. But I could see that this person was very slow to absorb the information that I was given, giving. And so I felt led to just run out and try and talk to other people. And so I ran out into the city to try and warn whoever was walking by. And when I woke up, as is always my hab habit to do when things are extremely extreme. Some of the visions that the Lord gives me, truly, I'm so glad when I wake up, I'm so glad that it is not yet that day. And I said, Lord, is it really so? And the Lord said to me several times, I have shown you this matter, and they are expressly concerning the times that will come to earth. I'm now going to read out the Lord's words, and I really ask you to take this seriously. I ask you, if you are just coming here to be a voyeur, why don't you be a voyeur with open ears so that the stuff that you take away will not only fall out of your head, but will enter your heart as seed, so that when you see these things manifesting, this channel will probably be a thing of the past. And that's something that I felt led to say today, that I am not here for you to come to become dependent on me. So I'm not here as a crystal ball and I'm not here as, you know, the guru of the times for you to um, get involved in asking, what about this and what about that? That's not why I'm here. I'm here, I am here reading out stuff that is older than you and I. So um, there's a lot of things that are written in the Bible, everything that I'm talking about is actually in the scriptures. And these scriptures predate definitely this generation that is alive. So understand when you think about things in that manner that I'm not here to have a conversation. I'm not here revealing things that can be reversed. I'm actually following after the greatness of this Bible that was there before I was conceived. And I am here bringing you, as it were, a crayon to color in the details of things that Ezekiel and Jeremiah spoke about the United States and many other things that will come to pass to the whole world. Therefore, I'm reading out some inexonerable truths that you can't get away from. And so when you're here, you're actually here not for me, you're here for yourself. 
You're here to learn. You're here to listen. You're here to absorb. You're here to get some puzzle pieces that you can add to the puzzle pieces you might have already had, or you're here to get the whole puzzle because this is probably the first time in your Christianity or in your non-Christianity. If you're not a Christian, you're absolutely welcome to the master's voice. This is the first time that you've heard these things. And so this is where you actually come to pick up um, kernels of truth and seed and plant it in your heart so that a tree of faith will grow. So this is not a place where you can come and be dependent on me giving you information because I will not always be here. I've said that before. This is not the only thing that God has for me to do. And so when I'm not here, if you have not learned how to actually take truth and plant it in the field of your heart so that it can bring forth a harvest that will keep you safe in the end days, then this might be the time to listen to that and absorb the Lord said, please listen, this time will be a time of great deception. Not only will people not know what is true anymore, they will be unwilling to accept the things which are true because they run counter to conventional wisdom of what reality should be. But this that you have seen will happen exactly as you have seen. Unholy races will come to earth claiming to be humanity's Lord and master and they will be believed. They will say that they are the creators of man who love man and want man to ascend to a higher level. Where have you heard this? Have you ever heard the phrase ascended masters? To this day, I don't actually know what those are because my time is limited and I can't just go down every rabbit hole. But I know that this term ascended masters exists. And here was the Lord telling me that creatures, unholy races, where have you heard that? that they come perpetrating that there are so many different races of them where some are the good race and some are the bad race. Newsflash, they're all the satanic race. They all serve and follow Satan and they have one unified purpose, which is to strip this planet of all human life as vengeful punishment, so they feel, against God for punishing them for what they did. So unholy races will come to earth and claim that they are the Lord and master of humanity and people will believe them. They will say that they created man and they love man and they want man to ascend to a higher level. This will be widely accepted. Yet I say to you, it is a powerful lie that will deceive and destroy many. This I wrote in red. Please make sure that you read this prophecy on the blog. This is the deception of the ages, the greatest lie ever told that mankind was formed by anything less than my hand or that man has a creator outside of myself. So here is a direct competition to the truth that the gospel says that God made man. He created Adam and Eve in the garden and he granted to them the supernaturally, supernatural ability to be able to replicate themselves. Here will creatures come. The great lie, the greatest lie ever told, says the Lord, the great delusion. He says, many will believe this lie. If possible, even my elect whom I have chosen to receive everlasting life and fellowship with me in my eternal kingdom. There is no way to resist this lie except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Unless a man is born again of the water, spirit, and the blood, and is walking closely with the Lord in the company of the Holy Spirit, he will be open to this deception and he will fall away. He will believe this lie and with it, he will receive all the other deceptions and the disastrous consequences that follow it until it reaches its final fulfillment. And here is a good time to speak about holiness and what that means. There are many people who have given their lives to the Lord, and I will not take them, that away from them. They were touched when they heard the gospel message. They were pierced inside, as it says in Acts chapter 2, and they confessed their sin before the Lord, and they gave their lives to the Lord. However, the presence of the Spirit of God in these people is weak, and that is because the spirit man in these people is weak. They don't practice the practices that causes the spirit man to become very robust, strong, sharp, and discerning. So they don't spend time with the Lord in prayer. They don't spend any time in worship with genuine worship music and not the candy fluff that has now filled all the airwaves. So real Christians cannot actually hear music about clinging to the cross, being rugged in their faith, 
honoring God or pursuing God, Christians today now have the unbelievable notion that it is God who will pursue, pursue you as if when Jesus said it is finished, he meant, but I'll be back for a replay and I'll keep chasing you. It is us who needs the Lord. The Lord has done everything and made all that we need available. And it is us who is supposed to pursue holiness, pursue righteousness. These are actual verses that I'm speaking. Pursue holiness, practice righteousness, put to death the lusts of the flesh, because these things will hinder you. When you have a weak soul and a weak spirit, this body will be very prone to temptation. So you can be a Christian, but keep falling because of so many things that just draw your attention and get you confused and get you distracted. And every time the devil pushes the bait towards you, you don't actually have enough muscle in your spirit to resist. And so if you cannot resist earthly, earthly sin and earthly temptation, what are you going to do when there's spiritual wickedness and seduction that will actually thicken the air? of this earth and cause the heart to believe that abominations are actually blessings and that fallen angels are actually ascended fathers. What do you think your chances are of being able to discern a fallen angel? Because these beings are going to come with a dazzling appearance. They're not all going to come as these aliens and even the aliens that I have seen, they have an ability to make themselves appear as anything, including very beautiful beings. I'm sure a few of you out there have heard about, um, some of the ones that I've seen, the really good looking icy blonde ones with the blue eyes and the sincere gaze and the nice voice that is until you discern what they are and then all the fake humanity that they are able to model so well. So being able to model something means that you are able to pretend to have it. So they model empathy and human emotions so well until you actually receive spiritual understanding from the Lord and you can see what they are. And once they know that they're busted, all this stuff drains out of them. I don't know how to explain what it is when emotions and the twinkle in the eye and everything just drains out of a human-like face and you are facing an intelligence that is older than Mount Kilimanjaro and it looks at you and you realize this is a, this is a really good time to run. And so people who are practicing weak and Christianity that is full of holes, you are at a great risk of believing this lie. But I'm not going to leave out the fact that scripture has said that when the great deception comes, when the great delusion comes, it will be so great that even the elect, this is you who's working out in the spiritual gym all the time, 24 hours a day. You're praying, you're fasting, you have the ability to pray those prayers that can purge out demonic presences from your home, somebody else's home, your body, somebody else's body. You're running on the treadmill of faith. Yet the Lord says that no one can resist this lie except by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the only person, basically, who is going to be able to grant a person, weak Christian, strong Christian, the ability to discern the lie. So there's many now. You see, we, we right now in this world, the spiritual wickedness that rules and consumes the world has not reached a point where it actually affects your gray matter. I think the people, if there's anybody who watches this channel who used to be a Wiccan or used to deal with pentagrams and Satanism or people who used to deal with witchcraft, these people might actually be closer to home in understanding what this prophetic channel talks about when it talks about the age of deception. If you've ever been, oh, and people who perhaps have had involvement with drugs. So if you have ever been in a position where your mind comes under the influence of an external force and you are not yourself and you are unable to think like, understand like, and perceive like, yourself. Your thinking is fuzzy and you're easily confused. That is what the future is going to be like. So if you do not know how to wear your spiritual armor and keep it on all the time, your head will be taking multiple arrows and you won't even know it. And so when 
when the man of sin reveals himself on TV and, and says, I have come to bring peace, you're going to be right there cheering with everyone else because I saw in a dream, a horrible dream that I kept for a long time before the Lord told me to put it up. I saw in a dream the coming of this man and there was hardly any people on this earth that did not love, applaud, and follow that guy. People were so consumed of him. He had the greatest following of humanity that you can imagine. And I was staring at this aghast. So to break it down, this might be you and your family and your whole family is born again to the max. I mean, when you guys get together and hold hands and just pray over the food, there, there's a release of the Holy Spirit just over the turkey. You guys are that strong in faith. In that dream, I saw that the power of deception, that the man of sin, the end times coming one that the Bible calls the son of perdition was so great that it was able to puncture even those who were keeping themselves for Christ. And it was simply the Lord's mercy that prevented such people from following that guy. So imagine if Christianity is a, is a ladder and you find yourself existing here. And because of reckless love and all the music that has permeated you and the pastors going, you're going to be raptured. You don't have to worry about any of that. You don't have to build up your inner man and be strong. Jesus is going to get us out of here. And you've been sipping on that Kool-Aid for 10 to 20 years. And now you hear that you're going to actually be here when the man of sin arises. You haven't strengthened yourself because a lot of people are not strengthening themselves now. Because they're still clinging to this hope that I'm just talking and I don't know what I'm saying. So they're still clinging. There's a part of your heart, a little part of your heart that you have not given over to the truth of the fact that Jesus loved us so much that he left us with Luke 13 and Matthew 24 and the entire book of Revelation and the entire book of Daniel to let us know, hey people, it's going to get rough. It's going to get tough. I will not abandon you, but it will become such a narrow passageway that even those who are the elect, meaning those who have given their lives to me, might fall away like little dead pieces of wheat because of the things coming upon the earth. There's still people who have not left this place of desperate hope upon hope because they're still hoping that Jesus is coming next Feast of Trumpets or next Passover or next whatever it is that the different channels will be telling you. The Lord says that if a man is not washed in the blood and walking by the spirit and walking closely with him in the companionship of the Holy Spirit, he will be open to this deception and he will fall away. Will is an imperative word. It simply means it will happen. He will believe this lie. And once he believes the lie, he will be open to receive every other deception and the disastrous consequences that will follow it until it reaches its final fulfillment. If you're wondering what the final fulfillment is, it is definitely dying outside the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is definitely taking the mark and it is being consigned to having that rotten sore on your head while you're alive and then hell forever when you are not. So this dream was the first time that God ever showed me that there is another type of ship besides the round one. The round one is what we always see on TV. But this was the first time that I saw that there are pyramid shaped ones. And as time would go on, God would even show me that there are ships that have legs that dangle down. So if you just look at my fingers here, just imagine that this is the body of the ship. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of a very depressed flea. So the shape of a flea, and then it will have legs dangling down. And at the end of each leg is a claw, which I guess can be used to hold things. So they have dangling legs, uh, maybe three, maybe four. And each leg has an iron claw at the bottom. So, um, I referenced the video I made yesterday, the little men walking on the sky. And that was where I saw the famous three-legged ships where, in, when people used to call the aliens Martians, but be aware that as we change our ideas about what they look like, um, they also change their appearance and they also change the appearance of their ships. So you have to know that this is deception. This is cloaking deception. This is undetectable deception that sits in the skies. Um, some people say that they're there now. I don't actually know, but I know that because they can hover 
silently, they can come so close to earth and be there. And we may not even know that they're there. They probably are there because the Lord says that they have been coming since the very, very early parts of human civilization. And so the saddest part of this dream was the human response that even in the face of something that causes harm, not that harm, this kind of harm, alien, deceptive, satanic, walking on the ground with us, demanding that they want to live with us, they will definitely demand to live with us. The Lord says to be free. They are going to come and say that they want to integrate with the human population. They will be put in their own place first because some of them will be hard to adjust to. But here's the thing about humanity. Human beings will accept anything as a novelty. So... I was living somewhere once and they debuted a charcoal black burger. The bun was black, the burger was black, the sauce was black, the mushrooms were black. The entire thing looked like a lump of coal. It was a top selling burger for almost six months simply because it was novel. The word novel simply means new, different, never seen before. And so because human beings love novelty, And also because we are exceptionally wicked and sinful. The hearts of people will crave after these beings. And within a period of time, as I've seen, they were allowed to mix and mingle with the population. And then that's when things will get seriously interesting. So last but not least, this is what the Lord said. The presence of ungodly extraterrestrials will be a global event, synchronized to happen everywhere at the same time. The weather will change before this. If it has not changed already, it will change before that time to favor them and keep them greatly hidden until their chosen time. So this is Celestial with the master's voice. I'll leave the link for this prophetic word below. Please make sure to always click the link and go back to the blog and read these prophecies. If you want to get ahead of the game, use the search box. The search box is in the blue part of the blog. So the white part is where the writing is. Then you come to the blue where the comments are. Below the comments, there's a small little box. That's the search box. All you have to type in is words like Nephilim, type in fallen ones, type in fallen angels, type in aliens, type in UFOs, and it will bring you up an entire cache of everything that I've written about these things that the Lord has shown me. And then you can actually invest your time very wisely instead of waiting for me to put these up because I'm involved in a task, if you don't know. I'm revealing these things. They've already been written, some of them, They are five or six years old. So these proclamations are actually done by me now, by video, because the Lord simply wanted more people to hear about them. But when I wrote them on the blog, they constitute proclamations of what will be. So just understand that this world is already in its punishment stage. The United States is already in its punishment stage. So if you ever wonder why all these things will come to pass, they will come to pass for the simple biblical reason that human beings are wicked. They sin. They never want to stop sinning. And therefore the Lord is going to allow them to receive all the things that interest them. And this is why these things will be able to come to earth. Humanity opened the door for these. And so they will come. They are part of the punishment that has been reserved for the end time generation of sinners. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. The Lord bless and keep you. And until I see you again, take care of yourselves and goodbye.